Jason Peacock here. As always, I'm just talking about some of these games I've been playing lately and what my thoughts are on them. Sometimes my opinion changes based on number of plays. Um, so it's kind of like a ongoing commentary of of uh, what's hitting my table. So let's just jump right into it. I'm going to talk about three different games I've played. Uh, two of them were first time plays and um, Bunny Kingdoms I've played a bunch of times. So I'll start off with that. Bunny Kingdoms, um, there's a review that I did up on the Dice Tower so you can check that out. But it's a card drafting game. You're putting bunnies on a map and at the end of each turn round, the number of uh, orthogonally adjacent squares with your bunnies are going to score points based on the number of towers in their cities by the number of different types of resources. Um, the first scoring round, people are getting very little points, but by the end, when you've got a huge interconnected kingdom, you can be getting like 60, 70 points. And the cherry on the top of this game is that beyond putting your rabbits onto the board based on cards you track, there is also a ton of cards that you keep face down until the end of the game and it gives you special uh, scoring points. So one could be, you know, plus five points for every bunny you have in the corner of the board. So if you pick this card early, you're going to be playing to that card for the rest of your game, trying to grab corner spots and stuff like that. I love that about the game. And this is one of my favorite drafting games. So um, the theme, I love the, the theme, the artwork of the, the bunnies gives me a Watership Down vibe. Really cool game. Check it out, that's Bunny Kingdoms. And it's designed by the designer of Magic the Gathering, the most successful card game ever. If you haven't heard of Magic, then you've been living under a rock. So same designer as that. My wife adores this game too, so I was so happy she asked to play. So um, Bunny Kingdoms, two thumbs up. Okay, next is a game that I've had on my shelf since I picked it up. Um, last year I played Clank, which is a dungeon building, deck building game. And I fell in love with deck building, uh, mixing with, with a board. Um, Trains was okay, um, but not as, not as much as what they did with Clank. Uh, so I got Tyrants of the Underdark deck building area control game with a, with a board and we played four player game and all of us loved it. This was an amazing experience, it had a good amount of play time, uh, the deck building is straightforward, it's easy to explain, you're uh, meshing together two different 30 card decks every game, so there's a lot of variety in there, and there's a, an expansion deck out now as well. Um, so everybody's eager to play that one again, Tyrants of the Underdark. I'm thinking about doing a review of that one. I'll certainly be talking more about it as I get a couple more plays in, coming soon. Ah, another old classic Euro game I got to play thanks to uh, a friend of mine here in town, Zolkin, the Mayan Calendar. Worker placement, which I'm hot on right now. Um, done very originally. There's a, literally a bunch of gears on the board and you're putting a worker down and you don't do the action until you take him off. And every turn that goes by, he starts rotating to better and better action spaces. Uh, so you're just putting workers on these wheels and then taking them off when you want to do the action. Um, really like this game. This is a thinky game for sure. I could really see the analysis paralysis hit me on this one but looking forward to trying that one again Zolkin the Mayan calendar I hear there's an expansion for it too so definitely uh, interested in getting to know that a little bit more all right so that's it for this I'll see you shortly with another three